know, as a journalist, that you're all incredibly busy. You've attended a lot of uh, press events already today, and you've probably got more to come, so we're going to try and get through this as quickly as possible, to give you as much information as possible in, in a short time as possible. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, the, the panel, the people on the stage with me today. Um, we have uh, Mario Pavel, of course, um, Jaco Janssen, Juan K, um, um, Giovanni Pomati, excuse me, Giovanni, uh, CEO of the Alta Group, Leonardo Ferragamo, uh, Chairman of the Alta Group, Herman Frias, um, Misa Poggi, uh, we have the translation in the middle there as well, and at the end uh, we have Lucio Nicoletti. The topic of discussion today, um, we're at the Monaco Yacht Show, so it has to be uh, the Swan Maxis, doesn't it? And more particularly the, the, the Club Swan 80, which is making her international debut here at the show. But we will also touch on current production at Data Swan and a little bit on the uh, Swan Shadow and the Swan Oak Shadow. But before all of that, I know that Leonardo would like to say a couple of words of welcome. Prego, Leonardo. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Anderson presentation. I have to say that uh, knowing how busy the boat show is uh, and how busy it is for you, we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share an important moment with us. Uh, and uh, today, uh, and I will be very brief, we're really very happy to present uh, some of the important novelties in uh, Nauter Swan, uh, namely in the Maxis in the Club Swan uh, Racing and in the Swan Power. So I will leave it to the panel, but before I will go to uh, the various presentation, we would love to share with you a video. Thanks again and thank you for all the support and the professional attention that you're giving to what Nator Swan does and what uh, we try to be about. Thanks a lot.
going to stay with you, Giovanni, because of course, as I said at the beginning, the uh, Club Swan 80 is making an international debut here in, in Monaco. This is a boat, as I'm sure you're all aware, designed with the aim of creating a, a new uh, class of one design, maxi races, so natural performance is, is key. The first unit was built um, by strategic partner Persico Marine in, in Italy, and she has a Canton keel and a uh, dagger board. And her name is My Song, which probably for most of you says something about her. I don't know, I'm not sure if we can mention him, but as he's sitting here in front of us, I will. It's Piero Luigi Loro Piana, who to my mind has owned some of the most beautiful sailing boats, modern sailing boats around. Um, Giovanni, the, the yacht, perhaps I should be asking Pigi this, but the yacht <laughs> raced in, uh, in Sardinia this summer. What was her performance like, and uh, what was the owner's feedback like? Good, uh, Justin. I mean, to, with so many uh, great sailors in the room, I think that uh, this answer should not come from me. So I ask PG please to say a couple of words. This was actually something. I didn't know that I had to say a few words, but I'm happy to do it. First of all, I'm very unhappy about this boat because we didn't want the race. I think one of the most horrible boats that you can find in the world. But if you want to enjoy one day of sailing, go there. <laughs> so thank you. I, I'm very happy. The boat is a fun boat, fast. The reason why we didn't want was one. Just started and we are not as good a sailor how the boat required. So uh, thanks to uh, everybody to particularly the 1K that we made a, a big effort to do something exactly as I wanted and exactly what Swan interpreter and um, what can I say more than that? That's right? awesome. Condition? <laughs> no, I am really, 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 I am very satisfied. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Giovanni, uh, obviously to create a new class you need more than one boat. Uh, um, what's the perfect number for a CS80 fleet and are you planning your own series of dedicated sailing regattas around this particular one design? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love to say that uh, uh, we speak about the boat, but uh, before that we speak here about the program. When we launched this project in 2020, we say that, that it was all about a program, means uh, a circuit of regattas, of events, and then you have a boat to participate in this circuit. There is, a, uh, you know, I mean, uh, this is at, at the base of this project. So, uh, how many? I mean, uh, three to five uh, is what uh, can build a class, for sure. Um, we, uh, we have uh, collected a lot of experience in the last year, so with the circuit, the class one um, regatta, uh, with uh, the, the one design, gentleman driven, um, uh, uh, how to say, the, 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 the boats uh, and the characteristic of the boats identical, no difference at all, so there is at the end also a controlled budget in this circuit. And all of this uh, can be transferred to a bigger boat, like a maxi. Where the events, uh, I, know, I mean, we have uh, the Rolex Regatta in the Med, with uh, the fantastic uh, venue, uh, like Porto Cervo, La Voile, uh, Giralia, and, and, um, and, and Sorrento uh, Capri. So these are the regattas that will be in this circuit. So now it's up to us uh, to, to, to run this boat, also in the rating events, uh, to demonstrate that uh, this is a step ahead, it's, uh, it's, it's really I mean, a, a winning machine and to, co to get in uh, new owners uh, that uh, will enjoy uh, the, the program. Okay, one. Well, this is a one design and in technical terms, what can owners change and what has to stay the same to stay within the one design rules? Well, the, the notion of one design is related to the uh, highest performance uh, boat, which is also the lightest. And from that uh, platform and reference, uh, there's a series of interiors and, and, and all the features that could be uh, added on. But no additions on the boat will uh, add performance. So the, the performance, the highest performance is the reference, and then there is uh, a cruising um, interiors and setup that could be added on top of that. Okay. Thank you. Um, we just saw some images of quite a radical 
the interior of, of, of my song, of course, Mario, I'm now the designer responsible for the interior design. Um, you have a very long relationship, working relationship with the owner. What was his brief? And again, I'd ask, what can come out during racing and what can go back in to make it a little bit more comfortable as I'm cruising? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we have been pretty used to this combination to put together two words that uh, are definitely one against the other, like uh, David and the same quote, uh, Arpasanta. <laughs> but <laughs> with PG we all share both passions, racing and going in the sea and going with the sailing, <laughs> with the sails. Uh, <clears throat> so this one was particularly challenging. Uh, and uh, it's also in, in, the, in, in the background and in the, in the heritage of the club swan in one design. Uh, uh, so in, on the 50, Juan and now Tor managed to have some good interior, not removable, but as light as possible. Here we went uh, beyond that <coughs> by engineering, because it, PG really wanted to have the most uh, fun and, uh, and performances from this boat, and which uh, one really interpreted in a magnificent way, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so the idea was to remove as much as possible. Pesco did a great job in terms of engineering this uh, removal parts. And uh, if you go and visit the boat here in Monaco, compared to what I saw in Porto Cervo at the Maxi, it's like two different boats. So that's... Uh, uh, so what are the removable parts, exactly? Yeah, sorry, it's yeah. not uh, your question. Uh, beds, uh, uh, the dining area, table, a module which takes a big part of the, of the galley, uh, and the boat has three nice cabins with three heads. Everyone with his own head. Uh, the master cabin is huge, really nice. And all this has uh, been designed to go a way to go uh, downloaded uh, to the dock uh, through the companion way. And uh, so uh, there is a, a standard version, which is the one designed one. Uh, which has some minor feature in terms of weight to give some some good uh, lighting. The, the lighting the design has been a, a, a substantial part of, of the atmosphere. We want to create a one in the okay. uh, But basically, the parts of those are. And this is one ton of weight. Uh, oh, well, okay. Yeah, okay. It's not, it's not, <laughs> If you haven't seen the boat already, uh, you can't miss her. She's she's moored just under the uh, the yacht club, and she's um, a beauty and a wealth worth seeing. So I take time out to, to visit my song. Um, right, I, uh, it's time we've come to the highlight uh, of this event uh, at least. But uh, Leonardo would like to make a comment. Go for it. Yeah, before you jump to another set subject, I think I think it is occasion to thank heartily everybody that has worked in this uh, incredible project today. Uh, starting from 1K, uh, Mario Pedol, uh, Giovanni Pumati with all his team. Uh, but there is someone I want to, which has not been uh, a kid. It was uh, an amazing, amazing project. Uh, we shared uh, this project with uh, Persico Marine, and they were fantastic in uh, working with us and making all this happen. But there is someone I want to uh, thank specifically is uh, PG Rodopiana, because I have to say PG that it was uh, such a, a high learning experience working with you, uh, your uh, sophistication, your knowledge and your great passion was a drive in making this project as, as beautiful as it uh, has come out to, to be. So thank you PG and uh, just to reinforce what Giovanni was saying, we believe a lot, uh, I think as we have shown, in uh, one design racing, uh, uh, alongside with the rating that is uh, taking the world, we have believed all along in uh, creating this new dimension, and um, it has proven with the 50, with the 36s, and others, 
it would be a dream uh, to show the world of uh, sailing, the world of uh, many people racing in the maxes, how much fun and how much rationality can be brought into racing in one design. And I think the 80 will work definitely to make it become a cluster, uh, would be something that would uh, be remembered in history. So, uh, we also count on all of uh, your support uh, to help uh, all of us uh, to make this happen. But once again, thanks to all the team that uh, has done an amazing work. Thank you.
Today, that's uh, very difficult to do, especially when you're know, dealing with Omati and the dimensions of the home. Um, I rely a lot on the work done by Rodrigo Arqueta and CFD and uh, Jeremy Elliott and the uh, VPPs in analyzing the performance and the balance and understanding the consequences of uh, what each change uh, uh, makes and I have a and to have a, a good argument to uh, deal with the, with the builder who has signed a contract and has a price to meet. And uh, this, and uh, sometimes there are uh, differences, I would say, in the perception of the effect of the changes. Uh, this project started as a 122 footer. When, when the, uh, dealing with the client. Then, uh, practically after she was sold, we had to add two feet for a, for a laundry, which was requested by the wife, who wanted a power boat and, uh, instead of a sailboat, but that was enough to convince her to continue with the boat. Uh, and then we also used the, the experience of the project manager Otto and the crews and we had to do a nose job, a, a reverse nose job. Instead of reducing the size of the nose, we have to extend it forward because these boats uh, are fun when you sail with the racing sails, good sails like a coat sail or an sail. And the crews are a little hesitant of when Work with four people to go overboard on a bowsprit to set a sail. So we, we extended the bow and uh, it made possible to the sail to be set permanently and allow the crew to do other things, the medium things they had to do, as they're not supported by a crew, by another 30 people. They're, they're just reduced to four or five. Other than that, we have done a um, uh, telescopic hill, which uh, gives uh, about 6 meters uh, 20 draft uh, without uh, interrupting into the engine room, which is also a critical aspect of the design. Having enough room for maintenance and uh, repairs is, uh, is critical to the use of the boat and reducing the downtime so that any any of these uh, vessels. We also um, work with, uh, with uh, Miss Apoggi, uh, giving enough headroom and enough volume to put on the, the nice stereo that she designed. And what else? So, um, I would say it's a new project. It's a completely new project, even if it was very traditional. These are recess for the twin brothers, which have been moved outboard as much as possible. And uh, the surface of the hull doesn't meet the, the rudder properly. So, although uh, this drawing looks horrible, in, in, in actual fact, it's a very small depression on the counter and the flow at that end of the boat is, uh, the thickness of the flow is very, very thick, uh, very big, so it doesn't really affect the, the, the stem, the speed of the boat. These are uh, ORC DPPs. Uh, with the prediction of speeds, and this is something we will continue to work with uh, with Cape uh, Horn and Jeremy with uh, Rodrigo, in uh, beating, if possible, the prediction of the RC. What we, we will try to do is to, to have a boat that is faster than the RC predictions, although they're pretty good. Yeah, 
not enough to maybe to do races. The races are part of the program of the boat. So and uh, the light weather performance in this case was a request uh, in uh, speeds of in wind speeds of six to ten knots. So we increased the the size of the of the basic set plan, but that will be adjusted uh, after the, the work uh, with the submaker and the CFD is well is done. I'm going to stop you there, for, if, I, if I may, um, because I'd like to give uh, Misa <laughs> and Lucha a chance to talk uh, uh, about the interiors as well. Maybe if you can just say a last sentence about this current diagram. Okay, Thank Misa you. can explain the skill plan. You want to pass it? Yeah, if, if, if you'd like to make a comment on this particular diagram, or we'll pass to Misa. Misa, um, you're responsible for the interior design. Uh, Misa will, will res re respond in Italian and uh, we'll have a simultaneous translation. Um, tell us something about, again, about the brief uh, um, and, and the design in terms of layout, materials, finishes. Okay. Forse mi ripeto, ma io sono addetta alla qualità della vita in barca. Perché quando disegno è come se fossi in barca, cammino dentro e quindi la lavoro e quando disegno come esserci quindi eh, la, la mia prima, prima idea è proprio star bene, star bene in barca con grande qualità di spazi, di volumi, di luce di comodità e di gioia <ride> eh, questi sono appunti di progetto Sento, mi sono trovato un 128 che è una gran bel maxi perché ci sta tutto dentro Let's give the, the, the translator a chance to, to, to explain something for all of you exactly. looking perplexed. Sorry, interrupted okay. her there for a moment. Um, so Misa was saying that what she deals with, first of all, is the quality of her life on the boat. So when she's thinking about the interior of the boat, she's thinking of, she's actually imagining herself living in the boat. So how you feel, how you move, where you go. So she designs as if she were actually on the boat. And the number one thing is to feel at ease and to be comfortable on the boat, to have enough space, enough light, enough volume, and just to be able to feel joy and to feel um, like you're at home. Allora, eh, nella sezione sopra, però vediamo anche nella prossima immagine, praticamente c'è la vita della barca. La vita della barca è coperta, cioè fuori e dentro che devono assolutamente giocare nella stessa cosa. Misa, questi sono disegni tuoi? Sì, sì, sì. Your okay, sono appunti you. miei di progetto, cioè mi piace molto disegnare, poi gli altri razionalizzano. <ride> cioè veramente razionalizzo anch'io. E perciò abbiamo praticamente la vita in coperta, che è una meraviglia, perché c'è la spiaggetta in fondo che non, non, è, non è venuta nel disegno, dove si può fare sport. Poi abbiamo tutta la zona di living, dining, prima colazione, sotto l'ombra e con la parte finale al sole. Dopodiché per l'aperitivo al tramonto abbiamo questa zona un po' bassa e un po' marocchina con il tendarino sopra perché è una zona meravigliosa e ti cambia anche l'atmosfera. Ottimo, pausa. Pausa. <ride> Okay, so basically you can see in the drawing above, the, on the boat, there's, you live um, outside on the deck and then there's an inside. So both areas have to be um, well designed and comfortable. For the deck, um, what I imagined was just to have these various areas that you can live throughout the day. So starting from the stern where you have this beach where you can swim and do sports to the living area, the dining area, there's a breakfast area, there's a place where you can sunbathe, um, then you can move more forward on the boat and, and have happy hour, have drinks at sunset. Um, in this um, amazing little area that is kind of like inspired from Morocco where you have cushions on the ground, you can have shade, you can have sun, and um, it's just an amazing ambiance for to finish off the day at sunset. Ora, 
eh, ovviamente entriamo, entriamo e abbiamo un salone, mi sono trovato a questo 128 nel disegnarlo proprio bello largo, nel senso eh, disegnando ci stava tutto bene, le proporzioni erano, mi, mi hanno aiutato molto. Entriamo e abbiamo questo grande salone e la particolarità di questa barca è che tutti, tutte le zone di seduta hanno doppia, eh, cioè possiamo trasformarle come vogliamo, possono essere sofa e dei bed, possono essere dining e possono essere grande dei bed con televisione. Abbiamo ecco, sulla, dei disegnini 2 e 1, il sofa diventa dei bed e da questa finestra meravigliosa delle parti. Perciò abbiamo la zona alta che è un grande soggiorno dove possiamo mettere anche un divano centrale con dietro televisione, per esempio, lo vediamo dopo negli appunti. Scendiamo, abbiamo aperto tutto, cioè la barca si allarga verso qua e abbiamo un'altra zona molto particolare che può essere dedicata o al, al dining oppure diventa anche questo un grande lounge, sofà e televisione. Ottimo, traduzione. So, um, after seeing what you can, how you can live the outside of the boat, you go inside, and um, what I found with the 128 is this um, really large space. I was so happy because there was so much space that you could work with, this wide um, living area that really you could fit everything into. And what I did, there's a, a big um, living area with a lot of um, sitting and sofas that always serve as a double, um, they can serve as sofas with a table or with a collapsible table, they can become these big day beds where you can just lounge and really have the privilege of looking outside because the window is right at the same height of the day bed. Um, and then on the lower area, there's a, um, another like lounge area that can either be used for dining or for watching television. And again, the sofa can be a sofa with a table or it can collapse and another have another big day bed where you can read, listen to music or whatever you choose to do. I'm going to, Lisa, um, I'm going to pass the microphone to Lucio um, because if you, by the way, any of, uh, any of you in the audience, if you'd like a face to face with people on the stage afterwards, they would be more than happy to talk to you. We did start a little bit late, so I'd like to continue uh, with Lucio. Lisa, excuse me, that. <laughs> Lucio. You uh, were responsible for fine-tuning much of the uh, exterior design. Um, again, uh, tell us something more about the, um, uh, the top sides. Okay, thank you. Vorrei con voi spiegare un attimino quello che è la Tuga e quello che noi, il lavoro che abbiamo fatto insieme con il team. Noi volevamo, come, ho voluto mettere degli schizzi iniziali dello studio perché volevo che voi capisse un attimino il lavoro che abbiamo fatto e sostanzialmente volevamo una, una tuga eh, legata al vento, cioè dare quel senso di velocità e quel senso di leggerezza a tutta la barca. Per fare questo abbiamo lavorato in diversi punti. Il primo punto è stato il vetro davanti, il laterale, che continuo, cioè ha la percezione di bucare e di avere la stessa continuità. Il secondo è stato il montante, il montante che, è, che si stacca, diventa quasi un elemento architettonico e cerca di sollevare la tuba dall'alto. E il terzo punto è stato di alleggerire tutta la tuba. Quindi in realtà non volevamo la solita tuba con la spalla, e con la discesa, separando così la tuba in due, facendo la parte davanti verso poppa più gnocca e dietro di valeria. Volevamo che fosse un tutt'uno. Allora per fare questo abbiamo scavato sotto, lavorando da sotto, alleggerendola da sotto e creando un movimento diverso dove praticamente lavorando da sotto abbiamo alleggerito la tuba e dall'altra parte la struttura che ti tiene su tutto il mondo. Lucia, Lucia, hold that thought. Translation. Grazie. 
Um, so obviously my team was worked on the deck house. That was our main job. And I, I wanted to put the first sketches that we did to really show you what our concept was. What we wanted was for the, the deck house to see give it this streamlined um, window look and, um, and to have a feeling of speed but at the same time of being something that is really light and not heavy. Uh, and we did this with the glass that is a continuous glass from the front part to the lateral parts and to do this we had to really lighten the whole deck house so we did this by lifting it up on one side and just taking away from the other side um, to get this feeling of really of lightness which is what we were after we didn't want something that looked like it had just kind of been plopped down on it but we wanted it to be almost like sculpted into the into the, the deck quindi in poche parole Mm, abbiamo cercato di eh, rivedere leggendola da sotto mm, abbiamo cercato di lavorare tutti nel team in modo da affrontare eh, tutta la problematica giocando sull'equilibrio e sulla leggerezza l'equilibrio è inteso come massa perfettamente equilibrata e leggerezza invece come senso di sospensione che sembra un gioco un po' filosofico, ma l'equilibrio di leggerezza è tutto. So with my um what, with my team, what our really what our main objective was was to actually work on balance and lightness. And by balance I mean just a balancing of all the elements, of all the masses and the volumes. And with lightness I mean a feeling of of kind of being suspended, of suspension, of, of something that is kind of lifted. So that was what our main goal was. Intanto eh, abbiamo cercato di capire un attimino come era fatta questa cura, però eh, quello che devo ringraziare è tutti i team, dalla Finlandia all'Italia, perché eh, è stato un grandissimo lavoro di equilibrio, di struttura, e ritengo che è molto merito lo devono anche loro perché ci hanno seguito e capito e abbiamo lavorato molto sulla sospensione e sulle strutture. Devo ringraziare veramente tutti. Grazie. And I really want to um, thank the entire team that worked with us also in Finland because we really all worked together and they really tried to understand what we meant. We tried to understand this balance that we wanted to strike in the structure and in the in the lightness and in this suspension and I was happy to work with them. I think we did a really good job and um, I'll be glad to work with them again because I think we really got this balance that we were looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Um, all of these maxes need a chase book, of course, and that is where Yako comes in, Yako is the guy with the big beard. <laughs> and Yako is the designer uh, behind the, the Swan Shadow and the Swan Overshadow. And, and not just the design, uh, some of you may, may think that he was just doing the styling, uh, everything, including the, the whole lights. Um, Yako, they, they, the two versions are based on, on the same platform, technical platform. Just walk us through the, the differences between the Shadow and the Overshadow. Uh, hello guys, and uh, hi from the dark side. <laughs> so, so uh, let's uh, start from there. Uh, so, uh, there's uh, two options. Uh, so, basically, we have the shadow, uh, what is basically an outboard version with the more grounded. It's much more a tender, a daypoint option. And then we have the over shadow, which is uh, uh, the inboard engines and much more worse as a weekend. So, much more space on the deck and also in the captain. I think those are the biggest differences in the models. Mm -hmm. And they're not different, of, of course, but uh, they have to be commonalities with the brand, don't they? So, so what are the, the, what is, how is the design DNA shared between the power boats and the sailing boats? I think uh, it goes uh, 
quite easily in the same category. So basically, we try to do the same elegance what you have in the same imports, and then we try to put the performance, what is also really important in the natural uh, products, and, and then uh, seaworthiness is really important. So I think there's a lot of uh, com common attributes of the design and materials are the same as well. Mm -hmm. And a surprise question here, you weren't prepared for this, but uh, can we see or expect to see um, other models in the Shadow, Swan Shadow range? Maybe this is a question for Giovanni. But no, I most had... probably I should not say anything in this question. <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni, do you want to uh, make a comment? It's, it's, it's like a, it's a question you did me about the Liga Maxis and exactly. the <laughs> The surprise will come, not too late. So, not I mean, uh, we, 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 we want to enter the business of the power water, not to make only uh, a tender of 42 food feeds, but uh, I mean, there is a future in front of us. We are designing the, the, the product range for that, but uh, uh, I mean, we don't want to, I mean, we want to, to build the base, uh, to build the team. To build a yard in Italy, where to do it, uh, and then we can exploit the range, not before. Thanks for that. Um, that just about wraps it up. Uh, and I will leave uh, the last word uh, to Leonardo uh, Giovanni. Um, I'd personally like to thank all of our speakers from Lucha, our excellent translator, um, Nisa, Herman, Leonardo, Giovanni, uh, Juan, Jaco, and Mario. And I don't believe I've said that without looking at my notes once. Um, uh, and yes, please remember that Club Swan 80 is uh, on, on show here, it's well worth visiting. And if any of you want to tete a tete with the people on the stage, they're, they're ready and willing. Giovanni, or Leonardo, or both. Leonardo. I'm the guy that has to take everybody. <laughs> but uh, once again, I want to uh, show my appreciation to Yarko. For me, it was an amazing experience, and uh, the Pandemia serves, served uh, to something because it was during the Pandemia that uh, together we were sharing the computer. It's got fantastic software and uh, uh, equipment, and, and we were able <coughs> at a distance to really look into the Swan Shadow at the time, which uh, um, was uh, for me something that I thoroughly love. And, um, I also have to add, and it was uh, through uh, the working together with Yarko that we came up to something that uh, convinced me, convinced the, our team uh, to enter in uh, the power boat, though in a small way, just a shadow boat. Uh, but for many years we were tempted, we were asked uh, to enter in the power world, uh, and we resisted uh, uh, for a number of reasons, including uh, the fact that. Um, that there's so many qualified players in the in the power world, we, we felt that we didn't have enough knowledge and experience. But it was only when we found uh, elements uh, that were in the Swan DNA that uh, I was convinced to go forward. <clears throat> Those elements are elegance. It is about innovation. It is about uh, performance and reliability. And the Swan Shadow uh, got them all together. And that was the drive to enter. And as we look at the future, now with the overshadow as an addition to the, to the initial uh, yacht uh, and to new models, I think this is something we shall always keep uh, in mind. And uh, I'm ready to commit uh, to this principle. Uh, we shall only come with power boats that can meet uh, these uh, values and can be in line uh, with uh, the strong values of the DNA of uh, NATO Swan. Thank you. Giovanni, the last word. Yes, uh, I mean, we are at the closing, and I'd like to use the opportunity, uh, as spoke before about uh, for the power, we have to, uh, to build uh, on the base of what is our sailing yacht experience, a team. Uh, to now, we had three people working on this, mostly Leonardo, uh, Roy Capasso and Michelangelo Casadei. And everybody of you knows these three people, but uh, they are all part time. And as uh, CEO of the company, I said, I cannot go ahead with part time people on this project. So we, we got in the team for a couple of weeks, uh, 
Fabio Marcellino said, please, uh, nobody knows because uh, it's coming from the... Nobody knows in our... <laughs> so, Fabio, welcome. Do you want to say two words about you, please? Grazie, Giovanni. Thanks, everybody. Uh, simply, I'm proud to be part of this positive and the proactive team. And uh, I'm, as Giovanni said, 100% dedicated in order to take the, the power boat standard uh, in line with the sailing boat uh, and with the, the Nautilus One standards. Obviously, I will work with Roy, I will work with Michelangelo, with, with whom I, am, I have some uh, uh, previous experience in, uh, in job. I have 22 years of experience into the power boat market and uh, uh, working with Yako, we will work here in order to have also some scale models of our boat. Thanks a lot. <laughs>